Hello everyone, welcome. We're gonna be building things. I have a guest named Psycho here today with us. So Hello everyone. We're happy to have him on the channel today. Thank you for having me, Bob. You're welcome. Thank you for helping. Uh, we've got a huge project here. Um, as you can see, tons of stuff. Um, water cooling, so pray for us. Anything you would like to say? Uh, no, this is going to take a long time. Uh, fortunately, we got uh, plenty of batteries for the camera because uh, we're going to go through all of them. So, uh, yeah, you want to get started? Yep. Go ahead. So this is the old computer. Uh, today we are upgrading from a Titan X Pascal to a uh, EVGA uh, FTW3 Hydro Cropper. It's a 3080. Uh, we're also throwing in a new well, okay, so we're transplanting some of the hardware from this case to a different case that's slightly bigger. And then we will be upgrading the power supply. Uh, I don't remember what's in this one. I think it's a 750 watt. We're going to go up to 1,000. Uh, we're keeping the CPU that's in here. It's a Ryzen 9 3900X. And this system has 64 gigs of RAM, so we're going to keep that as well. But we're also going to bump everything to liquid cooling. And whoever cable managed this before did a good job. It looks really nice. You did. Was it me? Were you the cable management pro? <laughs> So we're also going to snag the three Corsair fans from the front of the case and reuse those in the new one. We'll be adding another 120mm fan in the back of the new case. And there will be two 140mm fans on top of the case, but we're doing something a little bit different because we're going to put two radiators in the new case. Uh, that was really only made for one, uh, so I custom cut out uh, the fan mount on the top so that we can fit a 240mm radiator, or 280, it's 280mm radiator. Uh, that will go on top of the case and then the tubes will poke through into the case. Uh, but it shouldn't have any clearance issues because the 280mm worth of fans on top of the case before fit perfectly. So, so what are your plans for this week? Work. Just work? There's a steam deck that should be arriving. Very cool, very cool. What are your plans? I thought you already did a steam deck unboxing. I did. It's for you. Hell yeah. Because you got me that Steam Deck. Oh, hell yeah. So I'm repaying the favor back. I'll finally get to play the Steam Deck. Heck yes. Oh yeah, this uh, Titan X Pascal had some modifications done to it. It's using a uh, little NZXT mounting bracket to convert from a CPU AIO cooler uh, to the uh, the GPU die on the Titan X. Um, I don't remember which cooler this was. So I think you can use any, uh, I think the only requirement is that it has to be an Asetek style like mounting bracket. Uh, this one, it looks like it's a 120mm EVGA. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, there was slight GPU sag in here, so we stuck a 3D mounted or 3D printed uh, Pikachu in there. Keep the GPU pushed up a little bit. The power went out when this one was 3D printing, so 
his ear was never finished. Uh, so we just got like a little stick. Such character. He's so cute. We also put a custom backplate on this GPU. It's so RGB, it lights up, it says blonde metal head. But it covers up the uh, ejection uh, button for the PCIe X16 slot. So I'm going to have to unplug that first. Here's the old Titan. Show you guys what it looks like. So this is the NZXT bracket. And then this is the 120mm AIO mounted to it. Right now I'm pulling off the uh, CPU power connector from the motherboard in the top left. Trying to disconnect everything from the motherboard right now so we can transplant that first into the new build. Working on the uh, CPU uh, AIO cooler right now, uh, which is going to get abandoned since we will be using a full custom water cooling loop. I said no. He said yes. He won. Well, it it's funny because you can say no all you want, but when somebody buys the hardware, you don't really have much of a choice. It's true. It's true. Next, I am removing the capture card from the bottom of the PCIe slots. It's just a little cheapy we found on uh, Amazon, but it's got RGB, so that's how you know it's good. Oh, hell yeah. Unplugging those uh, USB 3 connectors always freaks me out because they're so fragile. I've seen so many of those things get ripped off of motherboards. The trauma. Is it me? Am I the trauma? <laughs> Alright, so now I'm unscrewing the motherboard. This is a ASUS X570E gaming motherboard, so it's a full-size ATX. And in this case, it goes from the very bottom to the very top. There's almost no room for fans up top. It does have two fans, but they're uh, 120 mil. And there's almost no room for them. All these new motherboards, the uh, one thing I really don't like about them is they have active cooling for the uh, chipset and in order to get to the screw on some of these uh, you have to take that cooling plate off like that and then it's hidden over by the uh, NVMe slot, the top NVMe slot. And I always forget about them. Some cases uh, don't have a threaded screw hole there though for a standoff. They'll just have uh, it's kind of like a standoff with like a little point sticking up out of it and it just kind of lines up with the motherboard so there's no screw or anything so it just slides right on. the uh, AO off real quick, the CPU cooler, and then we should be free. Perfect. Alright, 
right, so I'm going to go set this down. I think the last couple things we need are the hard drives. And then we should be able to move this case out of the way. Woo! I don't remember the exact model of the uh, old case. It was a Corsair. It was one of the IQ cases. Um, the new case, however, is my older case, because I upgraded to a 7000D, uh, which is massive, but the old case I had was the, uh, I think it was the Crystal series, uh, I want to say it was like the 570, so it's real similar to the other one, uh, but it's slightly bigger on the inside. And the outside, I guess. Now, this case has that post I was talking about too uh, for the center screw on the motherboard where it's not threaded, so it's real easy to just set the motherboard down. Um, and since that slot's covered up uh, with the active cooler for the uh, chipset, um, you don't have to undo all that just to get the stupid screw out of the middle of the motherboard. One nice thing I like about this motherboard, and other motherboards like it, is it's got a, the I.O. shield built into the board, so you don't have to worry about misplacing it or losing it. Or even worse, when you pre-install the I.O. shield on other motherboards, sometimes when you go to line it up, uh, you'll get the like contacts uh, wedged in some of the ports, so then you have to disassemble it, wedge those uh, contacts back up, and then slide the motherboard back in. Sweet. Alright, so now we can lock the motherboard down. One thing we didn't uh, verify before now is uh, if the pump will fit for the water cooler. It's a uh, Corsair the XT5. And. Yeah, XT5. It might fit, but the RTX 3080 is a very long graphics card. So if it doesn't fit where I want to mount it, we're going to have to figure out something else. Fingers crossed. I have some ideas. And if I don't have ideas, I have JB Weld. So typically when I put screws in uh, on a computer or anything really, uh, what I'll do is I'll line up all the holes and then start threading the screws. But I don't tighten any of them down all the way. Uh, until all of the screws are in place and then I'll typically tighten them down uh, kind of like in a star pattern just to make sure that everything's lined up and then threads properly all right so all the screws are tightened down on the motherboard uh, I could clean off the thermal paste from the CPU, but I just applied it not too long ago when I upgraded uh, from a Ryzen 7 3700X to a Ryzen 9 3900X. So, so we're going to pass. Yep, just going to wing it. Alright, so I'm applying the cooler plate back on the motherboard. I suppose I can start wiring up all the uh, USB headers and whatnot. Plugging up the uh, headers for the case buttons. This one just has a power button and a power LED. But you gotta make sure that you get the positive and negative right for the LED. What happens if you don't? Uh, typically, nothing terrible. The LED will just uh, not shine as brightly or at all. If you 
don't plug it up right. Um, I've never seen it like burn out the LED or anything. Alright, so that's good to go. So we need to plug up. Everything else still. Uh, still need to wire up the power supply, so I guess let's do that now. Actually, no. Before we do that, I'm going to start mounting the radiators just to get them out of the way. So we've got one 360mm uh, Corsair radiator. That's going to go on the front of the case. And then we have 280 milliliter that's going to go on top of the case. That one's going to go on the outside. So my plan is to mount the radiator directly to the chassis and then mount the fans on the other side of the radiator. Um, I think that should work fine. That makes it a little bit easier to clean too, because the fans on the front of the case will be pulling air in, and then the dust and stuff, if it makes it past the, uh, there's a mesh uh, filter that goes up front, if the dust makes it past that, then it'll just get gunked up on the outside of the radiator, and you can just quickly clean that off. If it gets in the fans though, it's a lot harder to clean off. So we have the front radiator mounted. Two fans. Yeah, so we're doing the QL140 RGB series from Corsair. And these will be exhaust. Oh, that was the 120. Sorry. This is the 140. <laughs> <laughs> so with the radiators, if your screws are too long, <clears throat> you will punch into the fins on the radiator uh, and you can damage it uh, to the point where it leaks. So we're going to try not to do that. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add washers. But I have to go. I have to go get washers in order to add washers. So I found nylon washers. Uh, so the plan is to put a nylon washer between the screw head and the fan, so that it bumps out the screw a little bit more from the uh, the radiator, um, because I don't want it to punch through the radiator. I ordered this kit off of Amazon. It's got a bunch of different uh, nylon washer sizes. Some pretty standard ones. Super convenient. Mochi is currently going nuts over a uh, mesh filter for the front of the case. Come here. Grace the people with your presence. Come here. This is Mochi. <laughs> Say hi, Mochi. So, <clears throat> this is the radiator fan and the uh, part of the chassis where it slides in and mounts. So the fans are oriented right now so that they will pull air out of the radiator. So this will sit on top of the case. Uh, the fans are going to pull air up through it so it will exhaust all the hot air. Uh, and then, uh, yes, down here is the modifications I had to make where I cut out this piece of the panel so that the fittings will fit through the uh, into the inside of the chassis from the outside. Oh yeah, I also ran the cables in the back uh, so it's easier to route them in the back of the case.
Alright, so uh, slight miscalculation. Uh, the radiator will not fit at an angle, sliding it in. So it will fit horizontally, just not... Or it'll fit, like, from the top down. It just won't slide in. It's just barely off. But it's fine. So what we're going to have to do is mount the... the bracket first and then try to get the radiator and fans on when okay. it's already mounted. I don't know if you guys have ever tried custom water cooling before but this seems to uh, happen 100% of the time. Some random weird thing happens. And that's why I ended up getting the uh, Corsair 7000D just because I'm tired of running out of space. <laughs> It's such a big case that it's hard to do. Alright, so the bracket has been mounted. So now we're going to do one fan at a time. Oh boy. It's fine. Alright. So one fan is mounted. So now we just got to get the second fan mounted. But before we do that, I'm going to put in the a couple of uh, the fittings for the water cooling because I don't know that I'm going to be able to reach that once the fan and everything's installed. So probably easier to do it now. This is great for you guys. This is going to take us hours, but for you, you get to watch it in like 30 minutes or something. Yeah, for real. Lots of editing to be done. So these are just some uh, Corsair compression fittings because we're using uh, soft tubing.
to take a minute to thank Psycho for all of his awesome work on this build. Um, he basically took over and just did the entire thing because of how complex it was. So um, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. He put a lot of effort into it. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment um, and I can work with him to make sure all of your answers are taken care of. But thank you so much again, Psycho. And uh, let me know what you guys think of the video. Take care.